Bertha, to me, is seeing your face and reaction after. So I want you to take a listen to uh, what he said in Palm Beach uh, on Thursday, and then, then you can tell me what you think. <laughs> Nobody spoke into crowds bigger than me. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, same number of people, if not, we had more. And I say it, if anybody I know is Jewish and they would vote for Kamala over me, they should have their head examined. And a lot of my people, a lot of the MAGA, as they call them, but the base, and I think the base is, I think the base is 75 percent of the country, far beyond the Republican Party, because we're a party of common sense and I'm a person of common sense. It is very clear Donald Trump is taking advantage of the marijuana laws of Florida um, because <laughs> that brother must be high as hell thinking that comparing himself to Martin Luther King and not, you know, Donald, the only difference between uh, the real estate uh, in 1963 and the real estate in 2017 is Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest difference. You ain't him. But this, Alicia, this is the thing that kills me. And one of the things that really bothers me about that press conference, and we maybe talk about it a little bit later on, is the way the press kind of lets all of that slide and not really push back and go, really? On what, on what grounds do you think your events and Martin Luther King's events uh, stay are aligned the same. And, and it just frustrates me that this guy gets away with a lot of this crazy noise and people just, just entertained by it. But it's dangerous entertainment. It's dangerous entertainment. It is dangerous indeed, and that is the most important point of all, especially when the stakes are, are high. We want to turn our attention to South America and the crisis in Venezuela and beyond. You are watching The weekend. I'd have seen a, a few people showed up in Philadelphia the other night. And then 10,000 plus walked into a field in western Wisconsin. And then on Wednesday, the largest crowd of the campaign showed up in Detroit, Michigan. But Arizona just couldn't leave it alone, could you? <laughs> Ooh. Wow. You know, it's not as if anybody cares about crowd sizes or anything. So <laughs> wow. That they exist. Uh, He's going for things that nobody's ever even heard of. Heavy into the transgender world, heavy into lots of different worlds. As you know, Governor Walz has been a major proponent for transgender rights, gender affirming care. He signed executive orders regarding that in his home state of Minnesota. But I wonder just what your reaction is to, to how Donald Trump is talking about that. He said that yesterday, the day before he said he's into transgender everything was the quote that he gave to, to Fox News. Well, uh, first of all, it's another example of uh, Trump's inability to talk about what he is actually going to do to make anyone's lives better. What Tim Walz focused on and focuses on as governor is just that. You look at the achievements in Minnesota, and you don't have to be a Democrat or a progressive to be, uh, I think, really impressed with what he's done to make sure that every child attending school can eat, uh, to make sure that there's paid family leave, something the vast majority of Americans think we should have, but Republicans 
are against on uh, issue after issue. Uh, what you see is what you get with Tim Walz, which is a pretty commonsensical uh, middle of the road uh, Democrat and uh, Midwestern governor. Now, look, uh, this is a playbook that is as unimaginative as it is unconvincing, because this is what Republicans say about literally any Democrat running against literally any Republican. They always say that they're uh, too far left. It could be Joe Manchin uh, running for president, and they'd say, you know, he's too far left. But uh, it's also pretty much and lazy for, for Donald Trump's best attack to be, what was it, he's heavily into lots of different worlds? Like, I, you'd think he would at least be able to point to a few more specifics, but uh, you, sometimes you get the feeling that, that Trump's heart isn't in this anymore, uh, the, the, the laziness of his attacks, not to mention the, again, lack of any uh, coherent account of what he's actually going to do to make Americans' lives better. You think he's a different kind of candidate now than he was in 2020 or 2016 in terms of how he's approaching this race, you mean? Yeah, I mean, you can just tell that he's lost a step. Uh, you know, he's getting uh, mushier, fuzzier, more confused. You look at this press conference, he uh, declared that he was in a helicopter that went down with Willie Brown on board. He's never even been in a helicopter with Willie Brown. And it, it does raise some real concerns about what's happened to Donald Trump over the years, right? Is this a symptom of something? Is he struggling to maintain a grip on reality or, or to tell the difference between uh, dreams and what is real? Or uh, best case scenario, he's just lying again. Republicans are attacking Governor Walls uh, over when he retired from the military after he served for 24 years, also overstating his title on some occasions, his rank where he was. As a fellow veteran who you were careful about how you characterized your service on the campaign, campaign trail when you ran, what do you make of those attacks? I think it's one example, one more example of how all they can do is tear down. Look, uh, in the military, you're eligible to retire after 20 years. Tim Walls stayed for 24 years. Uh, and some people are trying to attack him because he didn't make it 25 or 26. Uh, it, it's just not uh, the way that most service members, most veterans would talk about their own service or someone else's service. And it's part of a broader pattern, especially what you see with J.D. Vance, right? You know, earlier he was getting a lot of attention for the way he talks about family, uh, not so much lifting up the idea of family and talking about how proud uh, he, he is to be a father, but rather saying that if you're not a parent, there's something wrong with you, the whole childless cat ladies thing. And there's something kind of similar here, right? It, it, he didn't just say that he's proud of the, the time that he served in the Marines and, and leave it at that. Uh, he has to tear down somebody else's service. And I would say, you know, saying that somebody's time uh, in the military is unworthy because they didn't deploy to a war zone is a lot like saying that uh, somebody's life choices aren't worthy because she happens to not have children. And, and there's just a total lack of ability to actually build up, lift up, which is what campaigns are about. So much of politics is about how you make people feel. So much of leadership is about what you bring out of people. And by that standard, uh, Harris Walls has been a home run and we're seeing the exact opposite from Trump fans. Well, and one part of where they've been bolstered is the, you know, him suggesting that he carried weapons in war, which they have clarified. I believe a spokesperson said tonight that he misspoke on that and that he was previously identified and had identified himself as a retired command sergeant major. He served as that, was elevated to that, but he reverted back to the rank of master sergeant when he left because he didn't complete the, the appropriate coursework. Should he be just careful about how he you know, talks about this, precise in how he talks about this, given it has bolstered what we've been hearing from Republicans? Yeah, of course, and, and they took the opportunity to clear that up. But again, I think this shows you how desperate Republicans are not to talk about the issues. They don't want to talk about their proposal for tax cuts for the rich. They don't want to talk about uh, their uh, campaign to end a woman's right to choose in this country. Uh, so they need us to be quibbling over the finer points of how when you have a conditional promotion to command sergeant major, uh, but don't retire at that rank, it's different from if you retire at that rank, but you still technically held out. Those are the kinds of things they want us talking about because they don't want us talking about the underlying issue. Uh, same thing with the thing about the weapons that uh, Tim Walls very much did carry and fire and train on and use across his 24-year military career, right? The reason why they're going so deep and so hard is to find the one time out of however many times he's talked about the issue, the one time uh, when instead of uh, saying the weapons of war he carried, the, he said the weapons he carried at war, 
uh, uh, it's to make sure that we don't think about what he was actually talking about at the time, which is that weapons like the weapons he trained on, assault weapons, those military style weapons, should not be in our neighborhoods, they should not be in our schools, uh, and they should not be threatening the lives of our children, a position, by the way, that most Americans agree with. But the last thing that the Trump ticket wants to talk about is why they are uh, facing down and disagreeing with the 90% of Americans, including the vast amount, uh, majority of Republicans, who think we should at least have universal background checks uh, to keep our kids and our communities safe. They want us to be talking about anything but their deeply unpopular plans. And this is an example of that. So yeah, of course, it's important to clear up uh, the time that he misspoke, but let's not allow them to successfully use that to distract what is actually going to affect you right now, sitting at home, hoping your kids will be safe when they go to school, which is, of course, not uh, the finer points of terminology. Yeah. Uh, it's whether the president of the United States is actually going to get serious about gun safety. So folks, more and more people are saying that Donald Trump is losing his mind. And you see it there from from the actual Harris campaign, the the, the lovable Tim Wilk. Oh, wasn't that a great pick, guys? Right in the comments saying, thank you, Kamala, for making a great VP choice. Because my God, he's uh, great on policy, great story, cares about his family, cares about his country. Uh, funny as hell. Awesome stuff. But the point is, everyone's ripping Trump. Saying if he if he feels that his crowds are as big as they used to be or or Harris's crowds are actually fake. I've seen some people uh, on 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 Twitter, some right wingers suggest that the pictures are fake to make Harris's crowds look bigger, even though uh, the, they're not AI. And even though you could see video of it and the video isn't doctored, Harris's crowds are massive. Trump's are getting smaller. It's it, they say he, he's on substances, which is really ironic because you remember earlier in this campaign, he said to Joe Biden that he wanted Biden to take a test because he felt Biden was on some sort of substances before the debates. Maybe Donald Trump is the one failing those substances. But you see uh, Pete Buttigieg also really go in there and slam Trump. This is showing that Trump is an old man that's lost his step. Simple as that. In that he was always a dum dumb, he was never quite this decrepit and slow and weak. And so while he hides away, doing just one or two rallies a week, seemingly, which is nothing at this stage of a campaign, in red states, Harris is zigzagging every swing state in existence, destroying him on stage. <laughs> 